What's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch, and in this video we're going to do our final episode of our budget gaming PC build guide series. And here we're going to take both of our systems that we made, one uh, based on the AMD 860K, this is a quad core chip with the R9 380, and the Intel G32 58 processor coupled with the GTX 960. Now what we're going to do is just uh, give a brief breakdown of the entire system configuration. We're going to talk about the overclocking settings we've used, and then we're finally going to do a head-to-head -head comparison between some CPU benchmarks, some general performance tests, and also get into the gaming performance of what both of these two systems have to offer. So that way you can determine for around $400 which a platform is best suited towards you. So without any further delays, let's get right into this. Now right in front of you is the full specification uh, list of what each uh, computer is packing. Now uh, basically on the AMD side we're using the 860K quad core chip and uh, we're pairing it with the Gigabyte GA F2A68HM uh, board and uh, both systems will have 4 gigabytes of uh, memory as well as about 500 gigabytes of mechanical hard drive so nothing really fancy over here. Both have a pretty simple case and as well as 500 watt power supply. Now, as we mentioned before, on the Intel side, we're using the Pentium G3258. This is a unlocked uh, dual core chip. It has no hyper threading, so it's pretty simple. But uh, again, from our performance benchmark results, this is probably the best price to performance ratio processor you can get from Intel right now, even though it's not the current generation series. Now, in terms of our motherboard, we're using a nice Z97M DS3H from Gigabyte. And even though brand new, this motherboard is a little bit pricey, but it's definitely definitely going to give us a lot of flexibility and power when it comes to our overclocking and later down the road if you want to upgrade to an i3 i5 or i7 you have plenty of options for upgrading the cpu because this motherboard is more than capable and in terms of our graphics card on the AMD system, we have an R9 380, the non-X card from Gigabyte, and we are using a Zotec version of the GTX 960 on the uh, Intel computer. And both cards are very similar in terms of price to performance. And uh, basically when we add up all the costs, now obviously pricing will fluctuate depending upon what parts you're using, sale prices, and where you are in the world. But I paid about $406 for the Intel slash GTX 960 system. And the AMD system costs about $395, and both are in the $400 ballpark, uh, plus or minus $10, so you can definitely get all these components if you're in the U.S. for around this kind of pricing, which is uh, certainly quite competitive once we start taking a look at the benchmarks. Now, in terms of our overclock, both systems were actually really easy to overclock, even with the stock cooler configurations. And on the Intel side, the uh, G3258 comes uh, clocked at uh, 3.2 gigahertz, and uh, we achieved a 4.6 gigahertz overclock, quite a massive uh, compared to stock frequencies. And the voltage was only set to about 1.282 volts, which is uh, very stable. And we've done some uh, stability and stress tests, and it definitely seems to hold up uh, thus far once you start to break in the CPU. Frequency of the AMD 860K is about 4.3 gigahertz overclock, with the core voltage set to about 1.39 volts. And it runs a little bit hotter than the Intel chip uh, but based on our prolonged stress test the AMD chip uh, should check out fine when it comes to overall long-term stability. Now for anybody building these systems I would uh, definitely recommend upgrading the cooler eventually. A great one that I really like uh, for the price is the Cooler Master Hyper T4. You can find these for under $30 and with a little bit better cooling you can probably upgrade your performance up to 5% more and uh, definitely prolong the life of your chips as well. Furthermore both of our GPUs have been overclocked on the R9 380 side we uh, set the core frequency to about 1100 megahertz uh, that's about 100 more than what you get at a stock configuration and the memory clock has also been up to about 1600 megahertz the GTX 960 has been overclocked to about 1360 megahertz on the GPU core clock and the memory set to 1959 megahertz now the first test that we're going to take a look at is a uh, one that isolates the uh, processors as much as possible and for that 
we're just going to use simply Cinebench R15. And what you're looking at is basically a comparison between both of the processors, both at the stock setting and at the overclock setting. On the stock frequencies, the uh, Intel chip isn't doing very well at all. It's only getting about 227 points versus 299 points on the 860K. And when we start overclocking both of the chips, you can see that we get a score about uh, 347 points on the AMD processor and about 328 points on the Intel side and uh, this is a definitely a scenario where more threads and more cores will give you a performance upgrade uh, even though uh, the uh, Intel chip is running at a faster frequency. Now for the next test we're going to use a uh, Geekbench 3 and this is going to isolate our single core performance with our multi-core performance and as you can see over here the single core performance is much faster on the Intel chip it gets 38 19 points versus uh, 2565 on the AMD chip but when it comes to the multi-threaded performance performance test you are looking at almost a thousand more points on the 860k and here is where you're going to find basically the big differences between the two when it comes to applications optimized for multi-threaded base processing you're going to find an advantage on the amd processor versus uh, applications such as many games that utilize a lot of single threaded uh, base processing you're going to find an advantage on the g3258 now moving forward we're going to take a look at uh, some synthetic benchmark results uh, starting with the 3d mark fire strike 1.1 and as an overall score our amd uh, system did score a little bit higher 6621 overall score compared to 6538 on the intel slash nvidia based system but if we take a look at the breakdowns of the score in terms of our graphics performance test you're noticing that our amd system did a little bit better with that r9 380 and uh, if we take a look at the physics score uh, they're both very very similar very close but again the 860k has a little bit of an edge up when it comes to uh, processing those physics in this benchmark and what's really interesting over here is actually the combined results you're going to see that the our nvidia system actually did a little bit better getting close to 3,000 points versus we're under 2,500 points on the amd system so it looks like the combination of the gtx 960 and a g3258 actually works really well together and uh, certainly has uh, certain advantages over what even what we see with the amd based system now one one good way to kind of isolate our graphics performance even more specifically to what the GPUs have to offer uh, we're going to use uh, Unigen's Heaven Benchmark we're going to set it to about high details 2x AA at 1080p you're looking at the results right in front of you about 66 average frames per second on the AMD system and about 64.2 average frames per second uh, using the uh, G3258 slash GTX 960 configuration so both are very very similar in most cases you're going to find that there's not going to be a massive difference between these two graphics cards and uh, but if we are going to pick a winner looks like our AMD system has a little bit of an edge when it comes to the uh, specific graphical performance. Now, with that being said, the really interesting notion was when we actually started to actually play some games on both of these systems and start to compare our average FPS scores and as well as our minimum FPS scores. And here you're looking at pretty much all the different titles we played uh, at uh, 1080p at fairly high detail settings. And uh, we basically see in most regards the uh, GTX 960 slash uh, G3258 configuration actually yielded slightly faster results with uh, a range of about to anywhere between 2 to 5 FPS faster than the AMD system. The minor exception of two game titles, which was Fallout 4, which in most cases, they're very, very evenly matched. We got about, about one more FPS on average on uh, the AMD system. And of course, the one wild card over here was the new Far Cry Primal, which got 45.4 frames per second on the R9 380 versus about 41 frames per second on the GTX 960. The minimum FPS was also faster on the AMD chip which is not surprising because this game is really optimized uh, for these type of cards. Now here what you're looking at is a summary of all the different performance tests we've done so far on both of these two systems and when it comes to the dedicated performance test when it comes to the CPU and a GPU tests in most regards uh, the uh, AMD system comes slightly on top certainly faster when it comes to multi-threaded performance but when it comes to single-threaded applications as we saw from the Geekbench results the Intel chip is faster 
faster. The 3D Mark uh, test yielded a little bit faster results on the AMD system, as well as uh, the uh, Unigen Heaven benchmark, which specifically tested out our graphics capabilities. But when it actually came down to playing some real games, five of the seven titles that we've actually tested out came out to be slightly faster on the NVIDIA slash Intel uh, system compared to the AMD system, with the exception, of course, uh, Fallout 4 and Far Cry Primal. But in most regards, looks like a system based around the Intel G3258 is going to yield a little bit better performance results, specifically when it comes to gaming. But for certain applications that utilize multi-threaded capabilities, the 860K is faster. Now, in summary, I think both systems are fairly competent for 1080p gaming, and they both offer a lot of value, especially at the price point. Now, I think there are uh, some key differences that everyone should understand before going ahead and building their own system. If you're looking for a better uh, out-of-the-box experience, I would definitely say that the AMD uh, processor, the 860K, is a faster uh, multi-threaded chip compared to what we have with the G3258. But with the uh, Intel platform, there is a little bit more room for upgradability. If you want to trade up uh, a better, faster processor, you can definitely can. The nice thing about the uh, Z series of motherboards is they're highly overclockable and uh, suited towards higher end processors. With the FM2 Plus uh, motherboard we have on the AMD side, you're a little bit more limited in terms of what you can actually install in there since uh, uh, most of the higher end AMD chips are based on AM3 Plus sockets. So a little bit more room for growth on the Intel side, but Straight out of the box, I would have to say, in terms of a gaming system, uh, I think most games favor the Intel platform more than they do on the AMD platform, but it's a case-to-case -case basis. Some games, as you saw from our summary, were a little bit faster on the AMD chip compared to what we saw on the Intel side, and same thing goes for the uh, GPUs themselves. The GPUs are fairly similar in most regards. Again, it's mostly dependent upon how the games are optimized for each uh, specific GPU, but really, other than that, guys, uh, definitely pick and choose the best parts based on the best deals you can get and what's suited towards your needs. And uh, definitely let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of the entire series. If you are building a budget-based gaming uh, system, definitely uh, let me know as well. And uh, check out the descriptions down below for all the latest pricing and all the parts we use to create our systems. But thank you so much for your support and throughout this entire series. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.